Hi friends, my name is Adam from Powerbelt 3D, and this is the Ender Easy Belt. I took an Ender 3 3D printer, I added a bunch of 3D printed parts, and a little bit of additional hardware to transform it into an angled axis conveyor belt 3D printer. If you're not familiar, because of the print angle, this machine can now print parts that are infinitely long, or at least longer than the old build volume. And perhaps more obviously, we can now print parts one after another after another without needing to manually go over to the machine and clear off the build tray. I took a minimalist and very simple design approach trying to reuse as much of the Ender 3 hardware that I could to make this a simple, straightforward build and very affordable. So much so that depending on where you source your parts, you should be able to build this for around $250. I'm really excited about this project. Let's get started. The Ender 3 from Creality and a lot of similar clone machines are incredibly popular 3D printers. They are low cost, so they are a great option to get started on your 3D printing journey and learn and hack and tinker and modify as you learn more and more about 3D printing. Because of this, I'm not the first one to turn an Ender 3 into a belt printer. There are projects like the Ender Loop or the Ender Bender, both of which take a similar approach of adding some hardware and 3D printed parts to an Ender 3 to turn it into a belt printer. There are even some off-the-shelf kits that you can buy that add some more sophisticated parts, aluminum extrusions, and sheet metal to accomplish the same thing. I wanted to take my own approach to transforming an Ender 3, again focusing on how we could transform this into a belt printer in the most simple, straightforward, and low-cost way possible. And this is what I came up with. I have been working on this project for a few months now. I have tested this printer for hundreds and hundreds of hours. I have redesigned every printed part at least once, um, up to nine or ten times for some of the components to really fine tune it to a place where I'm really happy with the results. I wanted to go through some of my design decisions and some of the areas that you might have questions about. The first of these design decisions is the heat bed extenders. So on Creality Ender 3s and similar machines, the heat bed leveling screws are actually sort of on the inside of the heat bed instead of being at the corners like on some other 3D printers. So I actually attached some 3D printed parts directly to the heat bed, which seems like a bad idea on the surface. But I printed these in 100% solid PETG, and they've held up really well, again, for hundreds and hundreds of hours of printing. If you're just doing PETG or PLA at 60 to 70 degrees Celsius on the heat bed, I think this is a really valid solution. But if I wanted to print things hotter, I would probably want to reprint these out of ABS, ASA, or polycarbonate something whose heat deflection temperature is a little bit higher than the PETG. Next, I have a strange feeling uh, that you might be concerned about the rigidity of this printer because it doesn't have any supports at the front of the angled frame. And I'm happy to report that this machine is surprisingly rigid. The back of it, where the printer connects at an angle, is a really beefy, again, PETG part, um, that hasn't shown me any issues while I've been printing. You can actually lift it up from the front of the frame and everything stays where it's supposed to. There, just in case you didn't believe me. Another design decision that I made was the front of the printer here. I actually modeled in slots to the front roller mounts so that you can slide a standard aluminum v-slot extrusion onto the front of the printer. 
I thought this might be a good feature. That way you can attach a part off ramp or maybe a collection bucket or any other accessories that you might want to easily slide on and off the front of the machine. Something else that I played with was how to run the angled Y axis of the printer. Initially, in an effort to just keep things simple, I ran it with the lead screw that used to be the Z axis of the printer. When I did this, I found that it had a fair bit of noise when it did higher accelerations over larger areas of a model. I tried to fix that by lubricating the Z axis and using a little bit of PTFE tubing to protect the filament from any of the grease that I put on the lead screw. This definitely improved the amount of noise that the printer gave off while it was printing, but I still found it a little bit unsettling. I ended up converting this to a more typical belt-driven axis and actually managed to just use a few 3D printed parts, hardware that was already on the Ender 3, and reuse the motion belt that drove the heat bed back and forth on the Ender 3 uh, before we made all these changes. Another thing that I decided to change was the control board and the LCD screen. I had a Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 laying around as a spare, and having started to use those for the silent stepper drivers, Going back to the noisy steppers that are common as stock on an Ender 3 uh, just wasn't sitting right with me. So I took this chance to modify the printer and upgrade the control board and LCD while I did all the changes. Earlier this year, I designed and had a whole bunch of specifically designed belt printer nozzles made. These nozzles are sharper and a bit longer than any standard. 3D printer nozzle shape. And when you're printing at an angle like this, it's really important to give yourself a little bit more clearance between the heat block and the conveyor belt in order to get nice, crisp results. So I designed this printer with that in mind to use the nozzles that I had made, and I've been super happy with the results so far. But if you want to use a more standard Mark 8 nozzle, that's totally fine, but you might need to modify some of the printed parts in order to make that happen. One other thing to keep in mind is that when you're using this printer, you're going to want to orient your models and then mirror them along the x-axis. So by default on the Ender 3, the x minimum end stop is over on this side. And I wanted to keep things simple so I didn't relocate it, uh, but that means we need to mirror all of the objects in our slicer before printing them. That way they come out the way that we are imagining. A couple other things you could do to address this if you don't want to do that in your slicer is you could remount the X minimum end stop to the other side. And there might be a couple firmware tricks you could do to make it home in the back right corner if you're facing the front of the printer. Um, but for me, this keeps the build simple and it's just one extra thing to reconsider when you're slicing your parts. One of my design priorities was to maintain as much of the build volume of the Ender 3 as I could, which, like I mentioned earlier, was a bit of a challenge based on where the heat bed leveling screws were. So the final build volume of the Ender Easy Belt is about 200 millimeters by 100 millimeters by infinitely long on the conveyor belt axis, which is also the Z axis. I built this Ender Easy Belt from an Ender 3 V2. I actually picked this one up at Micro Center. It's not a sponsor or anything. Uh, but for a while now, they've been having a new customer deal where you can get one of these for just $99 by typing in your email address. So that's how I built this one to keep the cost down to around that $250 mark once you buy the other things in the build of materials, the bill of materials um, that you can find at the link in the description. Um, the other option that you have, if you're looking for a cheap Ender 3, you can go on Facebook Marketplace, you can go on eBay if somebody bought one and it didn't quite work for them. Uh, you can also go to Comgro, who is an official Creality reseller in the United States, and they have 
super cheap deals on used open box Amazon returns. Um, and I imagine that most of those, I can't guarantee anything, I don't think they do either, um, are mostly brand new. Someone who bought it on Amazon, didn't quite get it to work, and then returned it to Amazon. And if you're just looking for a machine that you know you're going to modify anyway, that could be a really good option to get the base printer at an affordable price and then add the necessary hardware to it. Overall, I've just been really happy with how this project has turned out and the quality and consistency that I've been able to see off of this printer over the last few months. Like I mentioned, I've tested this printer for hundreds of hours. I've actually built a couple of these just to verify that everything works between newer and older models of the Ender 3. If this is a project that you want to build, I want to help you do that. So I have compiled this as an open source project. If you check the link in the description, you can find STL files, step files if you need to modify something more easily, a full bill of materials, a full assembly guide, Marlin firmware, both pre-compiled and the full library if you want to make changes for different boards. I'll also put a link somewhere here and in the description to my guide on how to modify Marlin firmware for this style of printer. That way, if you don't want to use the big tree tech board that I'm using for this project, maybe you want to use the stock board, maybe you have a different one laying around, you can see some of the few simple changes that you need in order to use that board, but use the rest of the build to your advantage. You can also find printer profiles for IdeaMaker. IdeaMaker is the slicer that I've been using for a while now, and I've been really happy with it, and they support this style of 3D printer natively. So you can pretty easily download the print profiles that I have at the link in the description and import them into IdeaMaker and start getting the same results that I'm getting here. If you have questions about this project, I am absolutely happy to answer them. Just leave them in the comments. I'll answer as many as I can. But I also want to maintain a document of frequently asked questions and answers. That way, if you're seeing this video later on, you don't have to scroll through a long comments section in order to find an answer to a question that you have. You can just go straight to the document. Like I said before, I'm really excited about this project and how well I've seen it print over the last couple months. I'm really excited about the impact that combining 3D printing with automation can have for small businesses and getting more ideas out there into the world. I wanted to say thank you for watching, and if you're the type of person that enjoys building, modifying, tinkering with 3D printers, I would encourage you to maybe give this project a shot. Like I said, I'm more than happy to help, if I can, in any way. Be kind to other people, and happy printing. Hey, I almost forgot to say this. Um, I want to celebrate the months of work that have gone into making the Ender Easy Belt, and also I want to uh, thank anyone in advance if you might want to build one of these. So I made a coupon code for the conveyor belt that you will need to do this project. So if you use the coupon code Ender when you check out for the conveyor belt for this project, um, I will give 15% off to the first 15 people that check out using that coupon code. Uh, have a great day. Thanks.